Welcome to Absolute Value Equations in Algebra. When taking the absolute value of an expression involving x, we get two solutions, unless the expression in the absolute value bars is zero, or if it doesn't exist, which is a case we'll get to later. In the event that we get a zero in the, when we evaluate what's between the bars, we get one solution. Think about the simple example. The absolute value of x equals five. There are two values of x that solve the equation, negative five and five. Many textbooks give the rule, the absolute value of C is solutions X equal negative C and X equal C. What is more fundamental is negative X equals C and X equals C. The reason for this will be obvious in the later problems, the later examples that we go over and especially if we get to absolute value inequalities. Well, the two look alike. One has one additional step. It helps when more than one absolute value appear in the same equation, and it explains why some inequality symbols reverse an absolute value inequalities. It's always important to understand, not just memorize. So we can expand the general form where we have just an X, uh, an expression, the absolute value of AX plus B equals C. Here's an example. Solve the absolute value of the equation for X. The absolute value of two X minus four plus three equals five. First thing we have to do is isolate the absolute value on one side of the equation. The absolute value of 2x minus 4 plus 3 minus 3 is 5 minus 3 or 2. Then we will write two simple linear equations and solve them. So here, if I put the negative sign in front of the expression, as I recommend, we get negative 2x minus 4 equals 2. Or we could just skip that step and go to the step negative 2x plus 4 equals 2. Well, we negate everything here immediately. Any other equation, 2x minus 4 equals 2. If you can solve a linear equation, you can solve an absolute value equation. It's not more complex. It's just that you will be doing it twice. But ask yourself, if you're adding numbers like 2 plus 3, or three plus seven, and somebody gives you three or four pairs of numbers to add, do you panic? No, you do them one at a time. So we'll solve the one on the left. We will subtract four from each side, negative two X is negative two, and then divide by the negative two, we get X equal one. You can actually plug that back into the equation and see that it works. On the other side, we solve by adding 4 to each side, 2x equals 6, then dividing by 2, x equals 3, and again, feel free to go back and check and make sure it works. In the first case, 2 minus 4 
is negative two, the absolute value of negative two is two and it works. In the second case, two times three is six, minus four is two, the absolute value of two is two, it works. So we're expecting two equations as long as we're not running into a unique situation where x would be zero. Now we'll make it a little more challenging. Solve the absolute value of 2x minus 5 equal the absolute value of x plus 1 for x. Now, you can't make either of these negative because they're both absolute values. So what do we do? We make equations by taking what's inside the absolute value and adding that one step. So we're going to solve 2x minus 5 positive equals x plus 1, the positive version. Then we're going to let this one be the negative version. 2x plus 5 minus 5 equals negative x plus 1. Then we're going to let this become negative, negative 2x minus 5 equals x plus 1. And now they're both negative, the negative 2x minus 5 is negative x plus 1. If you look, the first and the fourth equations are the same. If you multiply through by a negative 1, you end up having the same expression. And the second and the third are likewise the same as each other. Multiply through one of them by a negative one and you will find the other. So we only really have two equations to solve. So we're going to solve 2x minus 5 equals x plus 1. And so we end up with 1x equals 6. And on the other side, we have 2x minus 5 is negative x plus 1. Or 2x minus 5 is negative x minus 1. 3x equals 4. x equals 4 thirds. Again, uh, feel free to plug those in and verify that they do work. The no solution condition. An absolute value cannot be negative. If an absolute value is equal to a negative value, there is no solution. So now we'll look at a more advanced problem. The absolute value of 2x minus 2 equals x plus 1. We have a variable outside of the absolute value boards. This is going to create its own problems. So we start off with our two equations. 2x minus 2 equals x plus 1. And negative 2x minus 2 equals x plus 1. We're taking the uh, symbol of grouping out by running a negative 1 through and distributing. We get negative 2x plus 2 is x plus 1. This side, we end up with x equals 3. This side, we end up with negative 3x equals 1 or x equals negative 1. If I plug the 3 in, x minus 1 becomes 3 minus 1, which is positive. Everything is fine. If I plug the negative 1 in, I get negative 1 minus 1 is less than 0, a negative number, in this case, a negative 2. So negative 1 is not a solution. When a variable p is outside the absolute value balls, checking is needed. 